Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs and video games, and today I'm playing Monster Train. This time on Monster Train, just like last time, we're going to do another expert challenge. And I just see the check marks. So I believe, I believe, the check marks mean that you completed it and you did it with Divinity? Is that what the check marks mean? I'm going to assume that's what they mean. So you get two check marks if you defeat the last divinity. You get one check mark if you don't go to the last divinity, but you defeat Seraph. I'm just going to assume that's what it is. So we're going to do spellcraft this time. A smaller hand, no discarding, and cheaper spells. Minus two cards per turn, that's awful. Cards are not discarded. Whatever. That's that's fine. Makes very little difference. I, I guess that means all your cards are frozen all the time. That's what that really means. And then spells cost minus one ember. Not great if you don't draw many spells though, right? Well, that's what we're gonna do. Spellcraft. It's a weird one. Now, we're going to be doing that with the Stygian. The exiled Stygian champion, and the melting, exiled melting starting cards. This is a clan combination that we have never done before, specifically the starting combination that we've never done before, and we've never gotten a divine victory with Stygian melting. So here's what we're trying. Are those actually a good choice for this run? Maybe, maybe not. Playing with the Stygian is, playing with the exiled Stygian is maybe not. But we're doing it anyway. Let's go. So we've got Ice Storm, which is kind of a great one to start with. I also really like Molten Encasement, and Offering Token is terrible. <laughs> it's terrible with this with this spellcraft one which you know we also have the foregone powers which are also terrible with this one so offering token is terrible but i do like the other two maybe what we can do is build a very small deck maybe anyway daedalus the professor has the explosive sigil Bell the Wings of Light has Scouring Crest. That's an annoying one. Very bad when you have a smaller hand size because you're guaranteed to draw the Scourge cards because they get put on top of your deck. So that's real bad. And then Seraph the Chaste. Luckily, we are not playing a Seraph that is giving us Blights. Seraph will remove half of any buff and debuff effect stacks. You know, not that bad. I don't think that, that one's that bad. So, let's get started. Minus two cards per turn, that hurts so bad. Magic Hand is weird. At least, at least we can keep things in our hand that we don't want to play. And Cheap Trick, spells cost minus one. Let's, let's do our champion upgrade first. Because we've got a smaller hand size, it's not likely that we're going to be able to get use out of the encant that much. Not likely. The cold channel is not amazing. The dire channel... I think the dire channel is probably the best. Let's take dire channel. And then let's take two artifacts. Conscription Notice gives us another random unit, which is not so bad. Trader's Quill doesn't do anything just yet, I don't think. We don't have any Consume cards. And Infused Mallet is pretty weak. I think Conscription Notice is the strongest out of these, just with what we have in initially. I think the infused mallet tends to be pretty weak, honestly. So, conscription notice. 
The cheater's hand is a pretty interesting one to try to cheat what we're doing here, but the sketches of salvation, starting with the sketches of salvation is so nice. That really helps just solidify what you're trying to do in your run, especially when we have nothing but train stewards in our champion. Oh, we've got two molten encasements. Hmm, doesn't really work well with the molten encasements. Yeah, the molten encasements don't really work with that. It's sad, but I think we still take it. Sketches of Salvation. We're going to have a lot of things in the center. I'm sad that the, that the molten encasements kind of fail here. Maybe we'll sacrifice them, because I think, I think their unit essence is essentially what they do. You know, we could sacrifice them to other units. That's an idea. Anyway, let's get started. The, the other thing about Sketches of Salvation is it kind of gets around the small hands problem, because we get our units out immediately. So, Mark of Invasion. You know I want to turn the first one on. Can we turn the first one on? Because the top is going to be quite bad to put Soulguard the Martyr. I think we still turned it on, but it's probably going to hurt more than it normally does. Well, at least, at least we've got a primitive mold, <laughs> but the primitive molds came at the wrong time. We can't actually put our champion anywhere safely, except that conscription notice gives us a card that might be good to put in front of the champion. So we're going to try it. So what do we get? We got a Wickless Tycoon. Ooh, I like that one. I wish he was on the center floor because we're going to kill so many things in the center floor. But at least on the top floor, it's not so bad. And the primitive molds can be played to cause the encant. So that means we kill another one of these clergymen. So we are taking some damage because of the trial we chose. However, not too much. I don't like that the Collector went at the top, though. The Collector going at the top is really unfortunate, but we can play our Train Steward up there. So we will. Discarding the Deadweight is unfortunate. It'd be nicer to keep it in the hand so we don't have to draw it again. But at the same time, it's probably good to defeat one of these that's going up. Probably. Let's use the Foregone Power. It's sad to discard the Deadweight, but it's better to discard the Deadweight than any other card that we would discard. We have Offering Token and Foregone Power. How terrible. What a terrible hand. At least we're probably going to be able to to primitive mold something next turn. So we'll just keep these in hand until it's in any way useful to play them, I guess. I do like how much money we're making this time. The money that we're making is really nice. We, we did get primitive molds. We have a few things in there. I'm really hoping to get one of the stealth things. That is not one of those. That is not one of those. I didn't get either of them. <laughs> How terrible. All right. Well, I guess we'll play these two train stewards at the bottom because they're no use anywhere else. And so far we only kill one. What did the offering tokens do for us? Not much. It's probably just better to leave them in the hand so that we don't have to redraw them. I think. It's unfortunate that we can't even defeat one of those. If we drew Ice Storm, we, we could play Ice Storm up here, so I'm actually going to play Offering Token in hopes that we get an Ice Storm. 
We got Ice Storm. Okay, well, that's good, because we can defeat everything up here, which is good for us. We got lots of money, we saved health on the Wickless Tycoon, and there's no reason to play the Foregone Power. We've got a pretty bad deck so far. Which, I mean, it's the first battle. Of course you've got a bad deck. But we've got an extra bad deck so far. Let's play the Primitive Mold. We got back a Molten Encasement. That's exactly what I wanted, and I want to play that at the top. Let's think about what happens here. If we play a Train Steward here, we kill one Clergyman. That's about what we can ask for, so let's do that. And then this burns out, which is fine. That that prevents the Ember Drain, if that's important, which it probably isn't. Also, I should have been playing a lot more spells at the top. I kind of forgot about the Primitive Molds being much better to play at the top than anywhere else. Oh, we got another Molten Encasement, which we can put in front. I like that. And now we're winning. Great. All right. So that one went just fine. We took a little bit of damage because of the trial that we took, but that's it. We got three damage. Wonderful. So the Helical Chrysalis is really nice. The Ice Tornado is good. The fact that it has Permafrost is useless in this challenge because everything has permafrost. Does that make Helical Chrysalis better because Ice Tornado has permafrost? I don't know, but I think I still take the Helical Chrysalis. We could get another Molten Encasement. You know, we probably don't want any more Molten Encasement, but we do want Drip Fall because if we have a Drip Fall, we can descend our own units onto the center floor, which is great. I'll take one of those. Now we really want some good units to put in the center. And we really want Merchant of Magic, probably because of Ice Storm. The Ember Stones are pretty pointless. Certainly, the Merchant of Steel is pretty pointless. Let's go to the left. Let's look at the Divine Temple first. We see a True Stone, which I really like. We see a Keep Stone, which I really like. Okay. Okay. I see something really good. So we want... We want to do some things there. Okay, let's take the Stygian Banner first. Do I want either of these? You see, I want to have four units that we want to have in the center. And I don't know if these are the ones that we want to have in the center. Obviously, the Spell Weakness one is pretty nice with the deck that we're building, and it's pretty good to have that in the center. Let's look at the map. So we could get a unit next time if we go to the Merchant of Steel rather than the Hell Vent, and I really would prefer to remove cards. So we're not likely to get many units, which means I probably should take one of these. Oh man. These are not the choices I want, but if anything, I'm going to take Icy Silophyte over Nameless Siren. So the Keepstone, we're taking the Keepstone, we're putting it on Ice Storm. Very important to have Ice Storm have a Keepstone, so we get to play it every turn. And then, now that it has a Keepstone, we really want it to have a True Stone. Yeah, there we go. A Piercing Ice Storm that we get to play every turn. It's a really good start. Do we want to also get a Twin Stone and put it on put it on our Helical Crystallis. Because that would be nice. It's not like we want to put it on anything else. It's just 
If we did that, we would also have to put the Ember Stone on it to make it really worthwhile. And would I rather do that and keep the spell at only doing 50 damage versus adding more spell power to that spell? I think we'd rather do Twin Stone than Spell Power. So we're going to do the Spell Chain. We've already got 40 Pack Shards after the first ring. <laughs> we're going to do the Ember Stone as well. There we go. So we're going to play lots of spells. That's useful with our champion. And then let's Purge. And there's so many things that are useful to Purge. The Foregone Powers are definitely one of those. But we also want to purge train stewards because of because of sketches of salvation. There's so many things we want to purge. But the foregone powers are probably the absolute worst thing in this deck. Even lower than train stewards. With the current spellcraft stuff. Okay, let's go to the next battle. I think we have greatly increased the power of our deck. And we definitely want a unit draft. We need, we need good units to be in the center. All right, we, we got train stewards and molten encasements again. You know, not my favorite. However, even though it's not my favorite, we will take them. And I'm going to do Soul Guard the Martyr and Icy Silified up here. We're going to save the Helical Chrysalis because there's no reason to play it right now. Nameless Siren, also not too bad to be at the top. In front of Icy Silophyte. Alright, we got our Ice Storm. Ice Storm is really good. We could play it in the center, or we could just kind of give up on the center and just have the top be the amazing one this time. Considering we can play lots and lots of spells at the top. Although, you know, we could play the Ice Storm this turn and next turn. So there's no reason not to play it, I guess. Let's play the Ice Storm. Do I want it at the bottom more than the center? No, let's play it in the center. There we go. Next turn, we're going to play Helical Chrysalis, probably. So, Helical Chrysalis, we could Primitive Mold our Train Steward. I see no reason not to. Primitive Mold, the Train Steward, we get our Encants by doing that. So now we can play the Helical Chrysalis up here, which kills him. And then we have another Helical Chrysalis, which we can keep in our hand. Which means next turn the Ice Storm does everything. So maybe we don't play the Ice Storm so that we play it more up here and do the Encant. I guess we could play these things up here even if we don't need to play them. I guess, I guess that's true. So no reason not to play this. We'll keep the Helical Chrysalis. Sure. We'll keep it. So, we can play Primitive Mold. We can play... Let's play the Helical Chrysalis at the top. Let's play the Ice Storm at the bottom. Let's play two Primitive Molds, because there's no reason not to play them. I think there's no reason not to play them, because we play this, it burns out, which gives stealth to our units, so you will take more damage before that happens. And then we can play Primitive Mold to get another Train Steward, which we can play at the bottom. And then, I guess at this point, there's no reason not to play my Foregone Powers, because I'm not going to go through my deck again. So let's play two Foregone Powers. All right. I think we have very much won this battle.
We can play the Ice Storm every turn, so let's play it every turn. Can't play the Train Steward. And then we absolutely crush. We'll crush with an Ice Storm. All right. That one went really well. Even though I got kind of the worst set of things with Sketches of Salvation, it still went really well. So I don't want Titan's Gratitude. Do I want another Helical Crystallis? Kind of do and I kind of don't. The idea for this deck is that we we make it really small. That's the idea for this deck. And we don't really need many spells. So maybe we don't take more. Although the Helical Chrysalis is a pretty decent spell. I'm going to take this one, but I'm going to be careful about more spells. I do still want to take units. Uh, not these particular units. Let's skip these. But I still, still want to take units that would be good in the center. The Lady of the Reformed is not great with Sketches of Salvation because she might not be in the front. Another Icy Silophyte is not amazing. Lady of the House is not too bad. Without any way to add Burnout, is it helpful though? The only thing that we can do to add Burnout is Primitive Bold. I really actually don't think any of these are good. So I guess we're skipping them. <laughs> we got... We got a unit banner, and then we skipped it. Oh, and I don't want this. I I said the wrong thing before. Yeah, we don't care about that. We'll go to the right. We'll look for a different unit. So the first thing is, we're going to look at the Merchant of Steel. We're going to see what's in here. The Speed Stone is pointless. I guess it's good on Icy Silophyte if we give her more attack. I don't know about that. We do want to go to the Concealed Caverns next. Okay, a merchant. Consumable cards. I always have the problem of there's so many consumable cards and I don't just know them off the top of my head when we come to this merchant. The Wormkin consumable cards could be quite bad. They could be really about Echoes, which would be pointless for us. So I think I'm not going to pick Wormkin. Melting Remnant consumable cards are often pretty useful. The Awoken consumable cards can be about healing or draw. The draw is good. I'm going to go with Melting. It's not what I wanted. I'm going to skip it. <laughs> oh no, we only got 10 gold. I feel like we have not done well. Alright, let's, let's see what the unit banner has. I do like the Paraffin Enforcer over Lady of the House because it doesn't just burn out. And if we take it, it allows us to take a unit that does burn out in the future. So I'm going to take it. But I'm not excited. We've got one more guaranteed banner. So we've only got one more time we could potentially get a unit banner. Oh no. Alright, let's go to the Divine Horde next. Spells get an extra upgrade slot is pretty nice. Mold Braces is pointless, I think. For what we're doing here, it might be somewhat pointless. I think I'd rather have Lightstone Casing. Let's have a few spells that are amazing. And then, what do we do here? Do we just re-roll immediately? 
Maybe. What would we put a heart stone on? We would put heart stone on icy silophyte, technically. We would also put a strength stone on icy silophyte. I think we take the strength stone and we put it on icy silophyte. And then we consider putting a heart stone on her, or we just re-roll. I think I want to re-roll. Endless. Ooh. Do we want an endless unit? I kind of do. So I want the molten encasements to be endless. Because then they come back to my hand. Okay, I like that. I like that move. I also really like rune stones. The rune stone doesn't have an amazing thing for it to go on, but we could put it on icy silophyte or paraffin enforcer and it would be fine. Before we do this, let's look at the the unit essence of paraffin enforcer. It it gives something burnout. <laughs> It gives burnout 2 to a unit. Okay. Well, do we put it on Icy Silophyte? Because Icy Silophyte needs some armor, basically? I really don't know. I guess we'll put it on Paraffin Enforcer because that's what we would prefer to be in front. <laughs> and we could even put a Heartstone on him. What else are we going to do with him, basically? All right, you're going to be the one that we hope is in the front. And we can only hope because of Sketches of Salvation. <laughs> so this is hopeful. Let's go into Daedalus the Professor and feel pretty weird about what we've done so far. Explosive Sigil is not too bad. I don't like what's happening at the top, but we do have the Helical Chrysalis, so I guess there's no problem. Yeah, I guess we put Soulguard the Martyr at the top, see what we get. We got a Rail Beater. Don't mind that at all. Let's put the Rail Beater in front at the top. Icy Silophyte in the back. She's kind of better than Soulguard the Martyr. Although we might we might descend her, because she would be much better at the bottom. And then we Helical Chrysalis at the top to kill the Constructed Explosive. And to trigger the Incants. And then we can hold this one in our hand for later, or we could do it right now. I don't see the purpose in that, because... They're not going to really do anything except kill this one, and we can't stop that from happening. So, let's just hold the Helical Chrysalis for now. So we might want to hit that one with the Helical Chrysalis. The Train Steward we just play at the bottom. Because there's nothing else to do with the Train Steward. We just want the Train Steward to die. I think we do the Ice Storm in the middle, the Helical Chrysalis at the top. We are hitting you with a Spell Weakness which is good with Ice Storm. Yeah, let's let's do the Helical Chrysalis at the top. Primitive Mold at the top to trigger the Encant. And then Ice Storm goes here. We could keep our Primitive Molds if we really wanted to bring back a unit. It's just that we usually don't care because we don't have space in the center of the top. So we got our Endless Molten Encasement, which we could put at the bottom, but it would just mean that we would have to draw it again, so that's pointless. We can Ice Storm in the center, just to hopefully kill the Constructed Explosive. Don't see much point in that. We could Ice Storm in the center because there's no better place to do it, and we want to Ice Storm every turn. So there's a reason. 
And then Helical Chrysalis just stays in our hand for now. Because we still don't need to play it. Alright, we could Ice Storm at the top and Helical Chrysalis at the top. I see no reason not to do that. Oh, the sweep is killing the Molten Encasement. That's kind of funny. Alright, let's Ice Storm at the top, Helical Chrysalis at the top. We could even Foregone Power at the top. Hope to discard the Train Steward. Yeah, we didn't discard the Train Steward. Maybe we just hold the train... No, no. We'd rather play it. We'll bring it back if we have to. So we want to Ice Storm at the top. Yes, so that our guys up here take as little damage as possible. You know, it it helped, but not enough, because we didn't kill that back one. We could draw a card to hope for something, but the thing that we would be hoping for is Drip Ball? I guess there's no reason not to draw a card. Let's get rid of the Forcon Power. <laughs> I'd rather get rid of a Train Steward. Is that true? No, let's discard the Train Steward. We're on power, we can at least play down here. Okay, so unfortunately we're only dealing 11 damage to you, which means you're going to hit the Pyre. And we're going to take 3 damage again. That's annoying. Also, I really didn't like that sweep damage. The sweep damage was bad. So you've got Spell Weakness 1, we can Ice Storm and hurt you for probably 88 damage. That's kind of nice. And then we could Foregone Power you as well. Seems also pretty nice. Our center, our center is so bad for a run with Sketches of Salvation. So, Primitive Molds go at the top. No reason not to do that. We can't play the Molten Encasement because there's not enough space to play the Molten Encasement, which is kind of a funny problem. We never drew our Drip Fall, which is... That's going to often happen with small hands, that we don't draw the cards. But I guess let's play Ice Storm here. And... Hopefully we are doing good things next turn. I think we will, but it's definitely not as good as a previous round. We can drip fall the, the boss this time, but we don't need to. We just win. Okay, we just win. We took three damage again. Formless child. <laughs> oh man. I think we don't want these again. The Horfrost Effigy is really nice, except that we don't really do that much Frostbite. We only do Frostbite with cards that I want to remove from the deck. Let's skip again. So we could do Lady of the Reformed now, because the Paraffin Enforcer would make it better. Oh my. Why do I not want any of the units? <laughs> I don't want any of the units. On a Sketches of Salvation run, we've got... We've got, like, middling units in terms of power and health. And a whole bunch of burnout with no way to add burnout. <laughs> the Lady of the Reformed adds burnout to itself, but only if it gets hit. Do we take it anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I think we take it anyway, because we need something.
This is not going well. All right, we're definitely taking Herzl's compound. Counteract the small hands a little bit. Okay, we're going to get a Stygian banner. We're not going to a Merchant of Magic, even though we have Lightstone casing. Let's upgrade our champion first. So we certainly don't want phased, right? We could get phased, but I think we'd rather have Dire Channel too. Okay, we're putting all of our hope into the Stygian banner. What absolute nonsense. <laughs> a cold Celia or a nameless siren. Where are the big chunky units when you want them? I, I guess we'll take a nameless siren. We're we're going heavy units and I hate that. I hate that with what we've got. Okay, a forgotten name is pretty good. Because the plus one magic power is pretty good. The votive key is definitely not something we want. Definitely not, right? I'm trying to think. We could add Endless to our champion. I think I'd rather have her forgotten name. So, we'll take that. We need to remove Train Stewards because they're terrible. We also need to remove Forgotten Power or Foregone Power because they're terrible. <laughs> Go to the next battle. We could get a random artifact if we give these units multi-strike. I don't think the multi-strike affects us that much. It does affect us, but I don't think it affects us that much, because a lot of our damage really comes from spells. So let's let's play Soulguard the Martyr at the top first. And see what we get. We get a branded warrior. It's not my favorite. The Nameless Siren is probably what we want with Soulguard the Martyr. So we'll... Oh, we can't fit that alongside the Paraffin Enforcer. So we're going to play the Paraffin Enforcer and the Branded Warrior. Because we can't fit the Nameless Siren there. I really like that the Molten Encasement ended up in front. And luckily, we can keep the Nameless Siren in our hand if we wanted to. Although I kind of don't see a reason to do that. So let's play it. Whatever. We're not playing the Offering Token. We might play it to trigger a Foregone Power in the future. Okay. We are defeating all of those except for you, who doesn't matter. We can play a Primitive Mold, or we could keep it for later. Considering how little space we have to put things, I don't think there's a reason to keep it. So what we do is we play Offering Token first. Offering Token first gives us another Primitive Mold. Okay. We're going to discard the Dead Weight. Then we play Weight of Contrition, we play Primitive Mold, Primitive Mold. That triggers a foregone power, so we've got more magic power. Which is good. You are unfortunate. Actually, you're not unfortunate because these these guys will be stealth. Never mind. Haha. -ha. You are taken care of, no problem. I'll keep the foregone power for potentially using it for a forgotten name again. We've got our Molten Encasement again. And we do have a Drip Fall, which we can use on a different turn, perhaps. Don't really like you, but next turn you die? We could Drip Fall this turn to Drip Fall like the Branded Warrior or something down. You're gonna burn out. Okay. That's unfortunate. How much space do you take up? You take up two. 
A train steward, train steward takes up two. So actually, the center is going to be freed up to have the molten encasement next turn. That's nice. So I think we don't do anything this turn. Well, I think we play a train steward so that it dies. And then we don't do anything. Okay, well, there we go. Wait a minute. The train steward didn't die? Oh, the train steward was... Darn. <laughs> the train steward was stealth, so it didn't die. Right. We knew that. We could drip fall the train steward so that it dies. <laughs> or we could drip fall the clipped guardian. That's also a very reasonable option. We do want to kill you. And I feel like there's a few different ways that that could happen. Either way, we're going to play Weight of Contrition. Let's start there. We are going to play Ice Storm. We could play Ice Storm in the center. But honestly, it's just this that's a problem in the center. So let's just Drip Fall him. You Drip Fall to the bottom. And then we might play an Ice Storm at the bottom. I actually want my Train Steward to die and I can't make that happen. <laughs> We want to play two more spells, so one of them is going to be Primitive Mold. We get our Nameless nameless Siren back. We could play it at the bottom, it would just die again. But I mean, it has Burnout 1, so that might be the best, so that we could get it back again. You two are dying, you are still not dying. We can play a Forgone Power to make that happen. But if we discard the Molten Encasement, I'll be sad. We need to play Ice Storm first. Ice Storm gets played first. I think we do play Forgone Power and hope that it does not discard Molten Encasement. How about that? It didn't. Alright. Now what are we doing? The Icy Silophyte is dying. We can't stop that from happening, but we can play Ice Storm. We can play a Primitive Mold up here to get Lady of the Reformed. We could play that next turn. Let's read what our card said, though. So, Reform... The changes persist for the duration of the battle, so even next turn, the Lady of the Reformed will cost zero. So we could play that alongside Molten Encasement at the bottom next turn. I mean, granted, we could play both Molten Encasements this turn, but we're going to draw, well, we might draw another Primitive Mold. Let's play Offering Token to trigger a Forgotten Name and then potentially play Primitive Mold. I think what we want is both Molten Encasements at the bottom with the Lady of the Reformed behind, and we don't want to play the Lady of the Reformed until next turn, so that the burnout lasts as long as possible. And the fact that both of you are dying is sad, but we've got a primitive mold to bring somebody back. And the fact that you are still alive and have lots of health is real bad, actually. We're going to see if there's anything we can do about that next turn. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we can. We did get two helical chrysalis. So that's good. We want to play the Lady of the Reformed at the bottom, like we said we wanted to. <laughs> you you have so much regen that you're only getting six damage. Now, up here, we basically want to play Helical Chrysalis, which we get another one of. And then we play another Helical Chrysalis. And then he's dying. 
We play an Ice Storm at the bottom so we potentially kill those Absolvers. We did. Great. And then, do we play Primitive Mold next turn? Probably. We can keep the Helical Chrysalis in our hand because we could basically get Forgotten Name again. So I think we're doing very well, actually. As weird as that sounds with how... how much our units have died. <laughs> our units die a lot, and we don't actually get much benefit out of them dying. Not a lot of benefit, anyway. So play the Primitive Mold at the top. We get a Nameless Siren back. You know, when the things have a whole bunch of burnout, the Molten Encasement's adding stealth doesn't do that much. But, you know, it's still worthwhile, so we're still gonna do it. And then, of course, we play Ice Storm again. I guess we play one Forgone Power and hope that it di doesn't discard Helical Chrysalis. Or we just play the Helical Chrysalis. Let's just play the Helical Chrysalis. And then we could play the Forgone Powers, because it's not like we're going to go through our deck again. Alright. So by the way, this says non-boss enemy units get multi-strike, so he has multi-strike just because he has multi-strike. Like, that's a normal thing for him. Well, we are going to Drip Fall him. We are going to Ice Storm him. And then we are going to play Forgone Power. And... He still has a fair amount of health and might kill us. <laughs> this might be a very short run. Yep, we died. <laughs> that one that one went pretty poorly. I really like starting with Sketches of Salvation, but man, we got a really poor set of units for Sketches of Salvation. And I wonder if that's because of Stygian melting. But I can think of several melting units that I would really have preferred to get with Sketches of Salvation, and we did not get them. Anyway. That's it for this time. It was a short one, but there it goes. Since this run was nowhere close to a victory, no new mastered cards nor divine wins. On the right, I am featuring Constructed Explosive, because I killed four of them this run. Since they explode on their first turn, I normally don't kill many of them, but I did this time. Pyrolite Master kills me for the first time this run. I'm sure to achieve vengeance soon. On the left, I have two cards I was putting a lot of hope into. Icy Silophyte having Sweep and appearing on the middle floor was the best minion I had, which is honestly sad when I'm not paying for my minions neither in Ember nor Space. Ice Storm, however, was incredible, and was set up to get even better. This one spell could wreck most enemies going up the train. For artifacts, I am showing an incredible combination to get, especially starting with both of them, as I did this run. Sketches of Salvation means if I reduce my deck to four stellar units, all of them get played automatically at the start. That means I don't have to pay Ember, Space, nor Draws on those minions. Conscription Notice allows you to have an extra minion that doesn't take up one of the four Sketches of Salvation slots, and can be played alongside your champion on turn one. Starting each battle with six minions on the field with spells for the rest of your deck, is a wonderful start. For more statistics, check out my tracking sheet, link in the video description. New episodes every Saturday, and thanks for watching.